Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com. Welcome to the update for Tuesday, October 29th, 2019. Free pick coming up, and this is also our NFL recap report, of course, as we do it each and every Tuesday throughout the NFL season. We'll get to that, we'll get to the free pick. First, a quick note, still got a couple of days left to take advantage of the 33% off offer for the rest of the football season, which includes college football and the NFL. 33% off the rest of the season. Go over to DocSports.com, go to my homepage, click on the package, it'll ask you for a code word that code is fb season 33 it's all one word fb season 33 33 percent off the rest of the football season college and nfl and again it's uh, about to end it'll go back to the regular price in just a couple of days so go grab that and uh, listen, we appreciate those of you who jumped on board this week in football. We appreciate those who stuck around after a bad Saturday last week because we came back this week and all of our plays, the entire package, Thursday through last night, through Monday night's winner with the Miami Dolphins covering by a point, we went 10 and one. College and pro football combined eight and one with premium plays. 2-0 here with the free picks over the weekend in football for a nice 10-1 weekend. So good time to jump on board. And uh, again, that 33% off offer will end in just a couple of days. So go grab that right now. You know about the football and, and exactly what we do over at DocSports.com. We call Thursday Football Thursday at DocSports.com. So my next football picks will be released as will everybody's over at DocSports. Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'll have this week's college and pro football. Got a big one on deck for you this week after the 10 and one week that we just completed. Also wanted to mention that uh, we did lose here last night in the NBA. Four and two now in the NBA is our record over at DocSports.com. Lost the premium play, lost the free pick here in the NBA last night. Um, and, and here's, uh, well, four and two, by the way, as I mentioned, the premium picks over at DocSports.com in the NBA this season. Now 48 and 29 with the last 77 NBA plays going back to last season at DocSports.com. I've got a free pick in the NBA coming up on this report. I don't think I'm going to have a premium pick there's only three games we're going to give you one here and uh, I don't believe I'll be in action in the other two so it looks like a pass as far as premium NBA is concerned at DocSports.com we will have the free pick here in the NBA but I do have NHL you know how well we've done in the NHL we've actually passed the last two days but we're on a fantastic run 38 and 19 October November run in the NHL you know about how much I like early season hockey we've been spectacular this year 16 and 7 and uh, just kicking it right now in the NHL so anyway, uh, that will be an NHL day for us on Tuesday. We'll have Major League Baseball World Series action on Tuesday. World Series game will be posted at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. The NHL for Tuesday posted at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Major League Baseball, boy, we got a rough one the other day because we had Houston. But unless I state otherwise, I named the pitchers, and that's what we did. And of course, Scherzer was scratched for the Nats. So Houston gets the easy win, but uh, we, we had to just get our money back with these scratch pitchers. So uh, we'll be back in action, of course, on Tuesday. Go grab that along with the NHL on Tuesday's card. All right, let's get to it. NFL recap. We do this each and every Tuesday. Videos are a little bit longer than normal, but uh, listen, 95% of you said you like this, so we're going to continue doing it. I do it for my own handicapping, so I might as well share it with everybody. And uh, just the notes we take over the weekend, watching the games, the recap videos that you get on the different networks, and uh, they're in no particular order, just as I jot them down and make notes. So here we go. Uh, Buccaneers at the Titans. Titans 27-23. Tennessee also got the cover in that one. Ryan Hill. Boy, you look at this Tennessee offense and you can see between their running backs and their linemen and the receivers that he brings a little bit more confidence to this offense right now. Tannehill, 21 for 33, 193 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Henry with a nice game on the ground, 75 yards, 16 carries. But overall, the team had just 246 total yards on 4.3 yards per play. We'll see if this uh, ability to play well with Tannehill at quarterback and game manage is going to be able to continue again. Uh, low output as far as total yards and yards per play. But another bad game for Jameis Winston. He makes up for your own offense when you're not gaining a lot of yards and scoring a lot of points. 21 for 43. Couple of the touchdowns, couple of the picks. Wilson now with 10 turnovers in his last two games. Mike Evans is a godsend for this team. They got to get a quarterback in the offseason. Mike Evans, 11 grabs, 198 yards, couple of the touchdowns. Reps did blow uh, that whistle early uh, in the third quarter. 
If you remember that Tampa Bay would have gone and taken the lead, they scored on a defensive touchdown after a fumble, uh, but the refs, they, they blew it again. They blew the whistle early, did not let the play play out, and instead of a touchdown for Tampa Bay, uh, they were not able to get that touchdown, and they lose the game 27-23. Giants get the cover, Lions get the win, 31-26 Detroit. Late cover for the Giants in that one. They didn't run the, bell, uh, run the ball as well as I thought they would against Detroit, 80 yards on 3.4 yards per carry, but Daniel Jones played well for the most part. 28 for 41, 322, four touchdowns, no picks. Tate and Barkley each had eight receptions. Lions couldn't run the ball at all. Galladay and Amendola had big games at wideout. Stafford had a real nice game. Detroit uh, was able to gain 6.1 yards per play. Jaguars get the win and the cover over the Jets, 29 to 15. Sam Darnold, no protection. He didn't have to worry about seeing ghosts. He saw linemen all day long and DBs. He was sacked eight times in the game by Saxonville, also known as Jacksonville constantly under pressure. He threw three picks, seven picks, and a total of eight turnovers now for Sam Darnold in his last two games. Jets run, just gained four yards per play in 213 total yards. Couldn't convert on third down, two for nine. Uh, Jags about five and a half yards per play. Good day for Fournette. Minshew, three touchdowns, no picks, 279 yards on 34 passes. Nice game for him. Now the Seahawks beat the Falcons 27-20. Now, uh, early in the week, you saw the line before the adjustment for no Matt Ryan. Seahawks covered that in the 27-20 victory. They were laying around three and a half, got adjusted up about five points. And the Falcons got the cover if you got the number late in the week after the adjustment. Matt Schaub was a bad first start in four years. He had Ryan-like numbers, 39 for 52, 460 yards, touchdown to go with the pick. Atlanta, though, no running game yet. They gained 30 first downs to just 18 for Seattle. They outgained. Seattle, by the way, by almost 200 yards, and Atlanta gained 7.1 yards per play, but they had that minus three turnover ratio, and that's that. I mean, that's why they lost the game 27 to 20. I'll gain a team by 200 yards and lose. Not good. Rams over the Bengals, 24 to 10. Rams get the cover in that one also. Cooper Cup turned that one 15-yard pass into a 64-yard touchdown scamper after the pass was completed, thanks to a defensive line, excuse me, thanks to a defensive back falling down, slipping on the field for the Bengals. Uh, the Rams averaged 8.2 yards per play. Goff over 300 yards, a couple of touchdowns and no picks. Uh, listen, Brandon Cooks suffered a concussion for the Rams. Keep an eye on this. That's four concussions in uh, two years for Brandon Cooks. Broncos lose to the Colts 15-13, but the Broncos covered. They were our big play on Sunday were the Broncos. We swept Sunday and Monday in the NFL. In fact, we swept Thursday going all the way back in the NFL 4-0 week over at DocSports.com. Uh, Broncos got the cover. Great final drive engineered by Jacoby Brissett. Did a fantastic job. And then Vinatieri, 47 years old, nails a 51-yarder uh, with about 30 seconds to go in the game, a little bit less than that. Broncos have now lost three games in the closing minute on field goals. Both teams ran the ball well. They both ran for more than four yards per pop and about 100 yards apiece. Marlon Mack, nice game on the ground. Chargers beat the Bears 17-16. to Coaching, blunder, bonehead, whatever you want to call it, play of the week, part one. We've got another one in a little bit, but the first one goes to Matt Nagy and the Chicago Bears. I couldn't believe what he did in this particular game. Uh, final four drives for Chicago. Two turnovers, a punt, a missed field goal. I get that. But they were running the ball well. They ran the football for more than 160 yards in the game. Montgomery, 27 carries, 135 yards. I'm setting up the bonehead coaching move of the week. They get the ball to the, to the uh, Charger 21-yard line. And then what do they do with 45 seconds to go with timeouts? What do they do? They kneel down on the football to set up what turned out to be a 41-yard field goal attempt. It's missed. They lose the game. Why in the world you don't run the football? Now, I guess on top of the fact that it was a coaching blunder on the field when he took apart that reporter in the locker room for asking, why didn't you run the ball? And he said, uh, oh, because when the other team's expecting the run, you lose three or four yards. Well, you lost two yards on the kneel down, your kicker missed the field goal, and you were running the ball right through the Chargers defense like a hot knife through butter, and you decided to kneel. You deserve to lose that one. Uh, Panthers lose to the Niners 51 to 13. Jimmy G, 18 for 22, bucks 75 to the air, couple of the touchdowns. One pick. Coleman, 11 carries, 105 yards. Kyle Allen, three interceptions. His first bad game, he had no touchdowns. He was under constant pressure. Uh, McCaffrey did run well, but San Francisco, 24 to 12 when it came to first downs. 6.2 yards per play to 3.7 yards per play for San Francisco. 51 to 13 winner. 
Cardinals go into the Big Easy. Saints get the winning cover 31 to 9. New Orleans 510 yards, 7 yards per play. Cardinals 237 on less than 5 yards per play. Saints had the ball 38 minutes to 22 for Arizona. They sacked the defense, sacked Kyler Murray four times in this one. And then Breeze comes back, has the fantastic game. 34 for 43, 373 yards, three touchdowns, only one pick. Thomas with a huge game, 11 grabs, 112 yards. Here's the coaching or the co-coaching bonehead move of the week. All right, it's fourth and one on their own 30, Arizona. They're only trailing by four, 10 to six, more than midway through the third quarter. Fourth and one, own 30, down 10 to six. You're playing well, you're in the game. You're more than midway through the third quarter. So what do you do? Of course, you, you go for it and you don't get it. Couple of plays later, Drew Brees throws a touchdown pass. Game over, 17-61. Punt the ball if you're Cliff Kingsbury at that point and try to play a little field position. Anyway, that was the coaching blunder bonehead move part two of this week. Raiders going to Houston, almost pulled the upset, Texans 27 to 24. Oakland seven yards per play to about five yards per play uh, for Houston in this one. Watson with the big game, three touchdown passes, no picks. Carr did the same, three touchdowns, no interceptions for Oakland. The big news from this one, uh, besides the fact for betters who took Oakland plus the points and getting the win, but the big news on the field, J.J. Watt lost for the season, injured pectoral, and he's going to be gone now. Houston will have to do without him the rest of the year. Eagles blast the Bills. That was our other play on Sunday. We had the Eagles 31 to 13. Bills, they weren't horrible on the ground. I thought they would struggle more on the ground and then Allen would have a rough time winning the game with his arm. Well, they actually had 98 yards on almost five yards per carry, but Josh Allen did have to throw the ball more in key situations. He only completed 16 of 34 passes, 169 through the air. He did have a couple of touchdowns and no picks. Uh, listen, Howard had 23 carries, 96 yards rushing. Carson Wentz only really had to game manage. He was 17 for 24 with a touchdown. Didn't have to throw deep a lot. And what they did is they lined him up behind center, by the way. I wanted to point that out. Watch this moving forward. Carson Wentz lined up behind center. Didn't go shotgun for the entire game. And they ran the ball right at the Buffalo Bills. And they actually made Buffalo's defense look beatable. That's not easy to do. They ran the ball well between the tackles. Patriots over the Browns, 27 to 13. I don't know if the Browns can create any more ways of losing and making embarrassing plays along the way in doing so. Uh, you had Chubb with the two fumbles early on one went for a touchdown one probably could have led to at least a field goal for Cleveland but Chubb fumbles at the end of a long run deep inside New England territory and then of course you had the Baker Mayfield shuttle pass picked off inside his own 15 yard line Pat's offensive line is not playing all that well, and subsequently Brady is not able to do what he wants to do in the pocket. They gained just 4.8 yards per play. Uh, the Pats had 79 yards rushing on just 2.9 yards per carry, while the Browns ran for almost a buck 60 on seven yards per carry. Pat's defense did sack Mayfield five times, and the Patriots have Baltimore up next. That's going to be a good one. Packers over the Chiefs, 31 to 24. Uh, both teams gained almost six yards per play. Casey got ag aggressive with their linebackers and if you saw the game you saw them starting to put pressure and get to Aaron Rodgers so Green Bay smart man they've been running the football uh, basing a lot of stuff off of play action, running plays, occasionally going deep at Aaron Rodgers. And that's what KC did. They got aggressive against that. They started putting pressure on Rodgers. So what do they do? Smart, man. They change things up a little bit and they go spread offense and they end up winning the game 31 to 24. Rodgers, decent game. Uh, Pack ran for about four and a half yards per carry. Kansas City's Matt Moore did a great job. 24 for 36, 267, two touchdowns, no picks. Certainly wasn't nine points difference to the uh, Vegas spread, at least his play on the field wasn't compared to Patrick Mahomes. Uh, they'll be glad when Mahomes can come back, but Matt Moore was decent. Steelers knock off the Dolphins Monday night football last night, 27 to 14. Dolphin backers got the money. We were one of them. That wrapped up the perfect week in the, in, in the NFL. Uh, anyway, they took that 14-0 early lead, didn't score the rest of the game, didn't score the final three quarters, but that 14 was enough to get the cover. Steelers ran well, 158 on the ground on 29 carries. And of course, the Dolphins, they pitch in with four turnovers and a minus three turnover margin. That was the difference in this game. Uh, Connor ran for a buck 45 for Pittsburgh. Mason Rudolph, decent game. Two touchdowns, only one pick. And then Smith, Schuster, and Johnson, 10 receptions combined, a buck 87 through the year, a couple of touchdowns. Miami's now 0-7 on, on the season, folks, and they draw a home game against the New York Jets up next. And they are getting five or five and a half, depending on where you shop, are the Miami Dolphins uh, at home. 
this coming week as they try to get their first win of the season. That's the recap of week eight. Free pick in just a second. Real quick reminder, uh, over at DocSports.com on Tuesday, Major League Baseball World Series action, and that will be available at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. My NHL will be available at 1 p.m. as we look to stay red hot on the ice. Now to the free pick, NBA Tuesday. We'll make it real quick. Uh, we don't think there's any letdown for Miami here. We think they're going to give the Atlanta Hawks youngsters uh, a little bit of a lesson here. Line's about eight. I saw a couple of seven and a halfs, but it's popped up to eight everywhere. That's where we'll grade it. But Miami minus the points over the Atlanta Hawks in Tuesday night's NBA. It's going to do it for us. If you like these videos, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. I'm Scott Spritz of DocSports.com. Let's put Tuesday in the win column right back here on Wednesday. And that'll be about 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific with Wednesday's report. It'll be much quicker than Tuesday's recap report. We'll talk to you then.